time on it that we do on other things, this emptiness in the husband-wife relationship will eventually show up as emptiness in the parent-child relationship. Because when husbands and wives don't care, take care of each other's needs, they soon run out of oil. If our well, parents, fathers in particular, if our well is dry, our kids are going to be in trouble. We will begin to substitute their need for quality time with material things. Instead of time, we give them technology, electronics. Here's a DS light. Keep yourself busy. I'm a good father. Go away. Don't bother me. Come back. Want some of dad's time? Don't have any time, but I have a new game for you. Here. Entertain yourself. We try to meet their need for connection by throwing a video in. I'll buy you a set of DVDs. Keep, keep yourself entertained. These do not, have not, nor never will meet the deepest fundamental needs of our children. They are substitutes that reveal a deficit in us. Our relation, ours, we are as parents, we are in deficit, so we don't have the, right, the real things to give to our kids, so we put substitutes. Okay, let me go back to the priority of the subset. Second important thing I'm going to say this morning. Taking care of your marriage is the greatest gift you can give to your children. Young people, you've got to get serious about marriage now. I don't mean seriously looking and pursuing. Some of you just... <laughs> They said, someone said, we have pastoral blessing, yahoo! <laughs> no, I, I'm talking about serious in your mindset about marriage. Amen. This isn't something frivolous. You can begin now and you can determine how you're going to Feel and think and approach marriage. There were some things Sister Barbara asked me before we ever got engaged. She asked me, what is your stand on divorce? She wanted to know, uh, she wanted to know my mental approach toward this. When things get tough, are you going to bail on me? Because here's the thing. It's always going to get tough. It's not if it gets tough. It's just a matter of when it gets tough and how often it gets tough. That's why if it was easy, they wouldn't put these words. For better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. Those words are in there because you're making a promise. For richer, for poor, for better, worse, in sickness. If it's a flu or a cold, okay. But anything worse... I'm out of here. Oh, the world is full of examples. A helpmate gets sick and they abandon them. I can't take you. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just can't. I can't do that. And you have to make a decision now. Me and Sister Barbara made a covenant with each other that we would never. And this, this month we will celebrate 25 years. She has never heard my mouth threaten her with divorce. No matter how angry we've gotten, it has never entered her mouth. Maybe when I was walking away and she... <laughs> but she kept the covenant. I've kept the covenant. I'm, I'm not... There's some sacred... Pla there's some places I'm not going to go. It's sacred. 
Because if we have that commitment, that brings security to our children. Our kids, this relationship has to be strong first. It's the foundational relationship. Okay, I'm getting ahead of my notes. Let me get back. But now's the time. Look, some of you had good examples in your home and some of you had terrible examples. But you don't have to live according to the example, either good or bad. It's no guarantee that just because you had a good example that things are going to turn out good for you unless you start making up your mind right now. But you can have had the world's worst example. My father had a terrible example growing up. He went to 12 different schools one year. How would you like to be moved 12 times in a school year and have to meet your classmates for the first time 12 times in one year? It was because, yeah, that's one per month. He was moving school because they were poor. They would try, they, they would rent a house, but it didn't work out. I don't know. I, I find that mind boggling that you could move that much, that you would drag a kid around from school to school like that. And so my father took his bad example and he determined that he would not follow that. And my dad was a very good father. Sometimes I think much better than I have been. Maybe that's why my kids want to go to grandma's. Okay. Kids, they need to know that you're committed to each other, moms and dads, husbands and wives. They need to feel your love and passion for each other. Look, show a little affection for each other in front of your children. I don't care if you're Chinese, Indian, or what you are. It's biblical. And oh, they'll go, ooh. They might. But you know what? It brings a comfort to them when they know that you're connected and that you're planning on staying connected till death do us part. They, they will sense if you have a strong marriage, your children will sense the hand of God on your union and instead of feeling slighted, they will feel safe. Instead of feeling put off, they'll feel protected. I know that divorce has become extremely common. I think the statistics in America is 50% of all marriages end in divorce. But you have never talked to a child that went through divorce and said, eh, no big deal. You've never spoken to a child that a home has broke up, that it didn't have impact on their life. Serious impact. In the terms of trauma. How many times have you heard a stewardess make this announcement? Okay, take a little flight with me. You can go Tiger or Singapore Airline first class. I don't care. Doesn't matter. You can be in whatever cabin. You can be in the cattle car in the back or in first class in the front. And the stewardess comes over the PA and she says, In the event of a change of cabin pressure, an oxygen mask will be released from the overhead compartment. Take the plastic cup and place it over your nose and mouth and begin to breathe normally. If you're traveling with a small child or an infant, please place the 